Today I want to go over how to create a nebula in Cinema 4D using the existing pyro system, the new particle system, and a new feature that they added for the volume shader which allows you to displace uh, volumes and get some additional detail that is super cool. I think it's one of the kind of hidden gems of this latest update to Redshift in Cinema 4D. So we'll be going over how to create this. Uh, this is just a, a space image uh, backdrop, um, but I can that I added in compositing. So we're mostly going to focus on this, and yeah, let's get started. So this is the file that um, I ended up with. I'll put it for free on my Patreon. Uh, so you can see we have a cached out par uh, pyro sim and uh, particle system as well, which is being pyro advected. And that's pretty much it. And then we'll cover the material too. So we can just, we can build this uh, from scratch. So let's get started. Delete everything for now. Add in a sphere. This is going to be our, um, our emitter. And we'll add a simulation pyro emitter tag. We want this to not emit from the surface, but from the volume of the sphere. And let's, um, let's see what it, uh, what it looks like. So pretty standard, you know, just basic pyro setup. Um, we can hide this sphere for now and we'll also go into the pyro output uh, change some settings. So for the object, we want density and temperature to be on always. For the pyro scene, we'll go in there. We don't want any buoyancy affecting the simulation right now. And uh, you can see there is a uh, turbulence setting by default without us adding any forces. So we can use that um, instead of uh, adding a force. So you'll see if we play this right now, it doesn't look like there's any turbulence and what we want to do is turn off scale with velocity and we can put this all the way up here at a thousand let's see what that looks like so now you can tell we're getting some effect of the turbulence Well, we can leave the voxel size there for now, but we'll decrease it uh, for the renders. Um, let's increase the octave scale, initial octave scale, and the incremental octave scale. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so for our uh, our purposes, we're going to need this to just emit for a few frames and then kind of allow the uh, allow the simulation to play out for a little bit so we don't have, you know, this emitter shape in our situation. So let's just set the emission up to be limited. Um, so we'll go back to our pyro emitter tag and we're going to keyframe the density enabled and temperature enabled so let's say 15 frames on frame 16 we'll turn those off and then uh, that should stop the emission of uh, new uh, density values or temperature values into the scene So 
So we're starting to get somewhere, but I think our turbulence uh, values should be adjusted. Maybe even reduced a little more. We just want to have enough turbulence that it breaks up the overall shape. And so something like this, I think, is starting to get closer to what we want. So, and for this, we, we won't need very many frames. So we can, because we're only going to be using a static frame. So let's let this play out again. Um, and when we let it play for a little bit, let's uh, set up some camera angle okay we'll start with something like that we're going to use a high focal length you can see right now it looks like blocky garbage but we're going to work on that okay that looks fine for now. Filter out the work plane and then uh, we will, uh, let's add our render material. So let's jump in here. Now there is a standard uh, volume material. So that's what we're gonna use instead of the old volume, plug it into the volume uh, output. Then we need to go into our presets and the pyro output. We're going to use density as our volume channel. And in a mission, we can use the um, temperature. And we'll come back to these settings in a moment. Um, when you apply volume materials for pyro sims, you want to apply them to the pyro output object. A little bit counterintuitive, but that's the way it is. Um, and then we are going to lower our voxel size. So let's see, we we'll probably three just to test it out. Okay, so let's uh, set our voxel size maybe to three. Let's try two and let's increase the octave scale again. I just like to play with the shape with these nebulae because uh, we get to just kind of make some abstract stuff. I'm gonna increase the Vorticity strength too. see if that helps and yeah so we're starting to get some cool abstract forms happening um, but one thing that for me that's always been a pri problem with the pyro system um, in cinema 4d is like the overall shape looks nice and cool but like you can see we have all these blocky shapes um, when we get close. So it's never been very good for close up, um, shots of anything. Uh, one, you know, kind of workaround that I used to do, uh, that we can try is going into the, um, uh, density of the pyro output, um, object and going to the, uh, density smooth factor. And we can try turning that on. Um, that will help to smooth those out, but we we're going to lose some detail as a result. So it's, it's kind of hard to find a good middle ground. Um, cause you can see we have a much smoother result, but we've also lost some detail, but the cool thing now with this latest update is that we can kind of fix that by using the volume displacement, uh, in the shader level now. So let's, um, Let's put a 
infinite light just so we can kind of see something uh, in our volume just at first. So let's rotate it and then uh, let's get a render view and we'll dock that to the left and let's see if we have anything here. So in our new standard volume, we have uh, controls over the color and uh, emission properties, just like, just like you're probably used to. Um, and we can change the emission mode between black body and color. If it's color, we'll need to reduce the scale quite a bit. Um, And then we also have a transparency control, which um, it seems like it affects the gradient of how the density values fall off. So you can see when there's no transparency, it's like there's super high density. The light almost can't pass through. And at full transparency, the lights, it's much easier for the light to pass through. So it's, it's a, cool control we have access to now and then if we change the value of the uh, transparency from darker to lighter you can see that has a significant impact over the overall look and again we can add color to our transparency as well um, so that can influence the overall look of the um, of the uh, pyro simulation as well. So we have a we have quite a few controls we can now you know kind of play around with uh, to get the look we're after. Um, so that's, that's kind of, uh, just exploring the new, the new standard volume. And so we're going to use point lights to kind of create hot, hot zones for where we want, uh, the visual interest to be in the scene. And that's the really cool thing about this is, you know, we're just kind of creating our composition almost purely with light. And I think there's something just really cool about that. Um, and you can, you know, go really minimal with the number. You can add in, you know, more distant lights. And, uh, I even experimented with using a um, a procedural approach to uh, adding lights to a scene like this. So we've cached out our sim and in our standard volume we can also apply some additional noise like we talked about uh, displacing the actual volume itself. And so I learned this uh, from a Sean Astrom video, which I'll link in the description. And basically this is the node chain. So you start with the noise. You need to plug it into a vector change range set to negative one and one and uh, multiply that by a value that we can adjust later and we can adjust the noise settings as well. And then uh, you're also going to put that into a volume scalar attribute on the working on the density channel. And uh, then you can remap the range as well. And Sean goes over this in his video, so I'm not going to cover everything here. Um, but you can just play with adjusting the look of the sim using noise after the fact and kind of it can really influence the look of the whole uh, simulation and add some cool additional layers of detail. So. I definitely think it's worth looking into and uh, playing around with. Um, 
So once we have something that we're, you know, relatively happy with the way it looks, uh, I think, you know, with these, a lot of times it comes down to playing around with lighting and especially, uh, you know, trying out different colors and positions and intensities of light. I think the point lights do a really good job um, of highlighting where, you know, you want the visual interest to be. So, and, you know, playing with contrast a lot, I think is important with these. Uh, so, something like that is, you know, starting to look all right. And, uh, like I had talked about, I had tried to do a procedural uh, light setup as well. So if you want to test that out, just use your pyro object, put it in a volume builder set to fog and uh, reduce the voxel size a little bit and then put that in a volume measure. And then that's going to be um, what we're going to use. Uh, we're going to go current state to object. Then we can delete uh, delete the volume measure we just built. And then this is going to be the object we're going to use in a cloner. Uh, we're going to clone point lights. We'll disable these, use the um, uh, use the object volume measure, set that to volume, and then let's turn this back on. So we can see that now we are distributing them randomly throughout that volume. So we can change the count down to five maybe We've turned off our initial um, our initial point lights, so these are just the ones from the cloner that we're gonna see. Oh, we gotta turn off our volume measure too. And so yeah, you can now play around the procedurally with the different light setups instead of you know going through and placing them and. This can be a fun way to just get inspiration or maybe you find your final look this way, uh, whatever, you know, and you can add uh, multiple lights in here. So we could add another one, change the color to something like pink. Um, and in here, just do a random clones and maybe set this one to like a more blue tone. And yeah, so you can do some really fun things, I think, with procedural uh, light generation here. Um, or you can get really specific and place them exactly where you want them to, like we did initially. So the next thing we have to do is just... Um, we can add some particles here. So let's use a emitter and we'll use a mesh emitter and the geometry will be our sphere. We're gonna emit from the volume and the start frame will be zero. And let's just again, kind of emit them only for the first few frames. Um, so let's Go to heat, well, maybe 11 and keyframe the enable, and then we will go with, uh, well, here, let's just check that it's working. So, yeah, you can see we have particles, but they're not really doing what we need them to. So, we're going to turn off the velocity, and then what we're going to do is add a modifier pyro advect and so that should set the velocity of the particles relative to what's happening in the pyro sim so let's see if that works and yeah you can see it works by default just it recognizes that there's a pyro object and advects the particles based on that velocity so um Let's up this number so we can see more of them. And yeah, you can see that we have 
uh, quite a few particles dispersed throughout there. And then if we want to see those in the uh, render, we can go render object particle sequences instances. And in the mesh emitter properties color, we could do random or some combination of colors that we like. Noise also works. And then you can bring that color in to the, um, the shader using the color user data, presets, particle, particle color. And then that'll be on there. And we'll do the uh, emission color as well. And then we'll add an emission weight of one and apply that to the particle group. And we'll see if we can see these in our uh, render view. And yeah, you can see them and uh, they are green right now because that was the color that uh, we had when they first uh, started. Um, so if we run the simulation again, we should be able to see them uh, in the new color. Yeah, so there they are with the new color and we could um, also go to the properties, radius and vary the radius, um, maybe like point five and let's run that again and turn back on our simulation and you can see each time we get a different result because of the procedural light setup as well and then um, whenever you're happy with kind of how these stars look, uh, you know, you can also adjust the scale here in the scale multiplier on the particle uh, uh, group itself. If you wanna just scale these, you like the position and the colors and the emission and everything, but you wanna adjust the scale, just do that here. And then um, we can uh, add in some, you know, post, post-processing effects here. Bloom, I think, works really nice in a shot like this. Um, you could do an optical flare as well, um, or a, and or a streak. So all those are, you know, look fun and spacey and cool. Um, and, you know, obviously just adjust your normal um, you know, your normal controls as well. So cool. Now, if we want to render this out and add a back, uh, back image, we could, you know, you could do that in the, uh, in the camera, you could add a background here, just whatever image you want, or you can do that after the fact in a, um, whatever compositing software you like to use. So we could go override and then let me find an image. Okay, so now we have, you know, we have a an image that we can throw in here and uh, use as a background. But yeah, the way that I would probably prefer to do this is just in a compositing software so that we can have more control over, you know, all aspects of the background. But yeah, I mean, that pretty much uh, is how you know, how you do stuff like that uh, with the new the new tools we have. I think you can create some really beautiful uh, nebula effects um, using pyro and then adding some additional displacement with the noise and then uh, also using particles if you want in here. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope, you know, you learned something about the new tools and uh, let me know if you have questions or anything or yeah, tag me if you render anything out with this setup. So uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.